up next. And this is one of the things when I said earlier that uh, if there's any mistakes that are made, they're mine. Uh, in converting all of these slides to uh, Keynote and all that fun stuff, I think that I butchered a bunch of Tom's transitions. So I am going to be his flunky at the front of the room hitting the space bar. Uh, but I will do this. He's not getting any more than 18 seconds on any slide. So, Tom, there you go. I, I, that was going to be one of my disclaimers. I have two disclaimers. One, I apologize in advance for the transitions. You will see my head nod at Matt several times to change the transitions. My second disclaimer is, is that I have noticed from the previous speeches that I will be able to get through my six minutes using roughly twice the number of words that everybody else has used. So hang on. I first became aware that, uh, that, that the lack of practice management education was a problem about 15 years ago when I walked past my managing partner's office and I noticed that he was holding his mouse up to his computer monitor like a remote control. And I realized at first that this was true job security. But it, it illustrated a larger problem, which is that lawyers are not well prepared for practice management. So before we get to a solution, let's talk first about how we got there and why the problems are there. The first problem is that law schools do not effectively track or teach practice management skills. Right now, only 61 out of 195 ABA accredited schools have some type of practice management course, and those are not even uh, mandatory or regular courses. And judging by the names of some of these, they're not regulated either. They're not planned very well. So why is this? Why do we have an issue here where, uh, where we have legal extern class, I think was one of my favorite uh, ones of these. Why is this happening? First of all, law school faculty are not practitioners. They don't know how to practice it. There is a lack of support from lawyers, from judges, from law firms, from the state bar, you name it. Nobody's supporting it. There is a failure to connect the importance of good practice management skills with ethics as well as risk management. And then finally, everybody thinks that technology is the easy button. Now, this animation did get screwed up. The role of law students is to train law, uh, role of law schools is to train law students in how to think like lawyers. I had a picture of Kingsfield up here, but it was really by a guy by David Brink, who I have no idea who he is, but I thought Kingsfield would make it more interesting. But it, it indicates, though, the thinking of faculty on practice management and how they're thinking about it, which leads to the problem part two, which is law schools attract certain types of people. Law review students might make good lawyers, but they're not always the best practice managers. One of our presidents said, C students run the, rule the world, and a most recent pra uh, president said, to those of you who have awards, I congratulate you. To the C students, you too can be president of the United States. So what's the deal with all these C students? Why aren't they running the law, their law practices the way they can? First of all, they're not receiving adequate practice management education, and they don't really care about it either. So what I want to talk about first is the fact that state bars need better practice management programs. Right now, only 21 states, a lot of the provinces in Canada have them, but only 21 states in the country have, uh, have uh, those. You'll see them here. I think it's interesting that most of them are along this part of the country. Most other states don't have any practice management programs because they believe lawyers should be dealing with substantive law in their CLE more than dealing with the practice of law. There are a couple of questions that were asked in the legal technology survey that I think also apply across the board to marketing finance. How important is it to receive training on technology? Well, I think this is the right answer. Most people said, 39, 42 said, it's very important or somewhat important. But let's flip that and look by size of firm. So the people who said that it was not important or not at all important are solo and small firms. The people who actually need the technology training more are the ones who think they need it the least, which I think is very interesting. But when you look at this next question, why do lawyers take CLE? Well, that's small. Uh, <laughs> the first one says need to fulfill state requirements, which I think is the very cynical reason why most people take CLE. But this 11.9% is the telling statistic, which is to expand their knowledge in areas outside their practice area. Nobody cares about that. So here's my uh, result. You have, first, lawyers who don't know anything about finance are going to wind up losing their client's money, losing their client's money, or their own money. Lawyers who don't know anything about technology are going to uh, get sanctioned by the courts for e-discovery failures, and lawyers who don't know how to run their practice are going to wind up like this guy. <laughs> so my proposal is, 
an act to close the achievement gap with accountability, flexibility, and choice so that no lawyer is left behind. Originally, when he hits that button, it was supposed to flap out flexibility, but instead it says there. <laughs> I meant to cross out flexibility there because I don't think this plan should be flexible. I think it should be mandatory. And it really comes to two what I think are reasonable and realistic propositions. The first step is to deal with the law schools. You have to go into the law schools and teach practice management skills in a more re reasonable way. The second step is to get all the lawyers who are out there right now caught up to the rest of everybody else so that they're able to teach the law students. Here's my proposal, and I'm going to only head the radical because I've got 18 seconds. In law school, practice management education should be mandatory. It should be an all-volunteer faculty of experienced practitioners. All law schools should have it, and there should be bar exam questions that cover practice management issues because there's no better incentive for a law school to have a class than if the bar exam uh, grades on it. Practicing lawyers, what should they have? They should get CLE credit for uh, practice management, but it should be mandatory that they do it. They should get automatic membership in LPM sections, which means that there have to be PMAs in all 50 states. They're already seeing new forms of learning. Solo Practice University, a couple other uh, uh, online forms are, are doing very well. But here's my one radical new idea. It's actually not new, but it is controversial, and that is the internship in between law school and the law firm. In Canada, it goes by the more genteel term of article. So what are we talking about when we deal with an internship? I've got what I consider to be a reasonably complicated model. You graduate from law school, you take the bar exam. Get that out of the way. Go to the law firm, you have a one-year curriculum where you learn about practice management through transition to law programs and mentoring. At the end of that year, you either pass and get your license or you fail, and this is only six minutes, so I really can't solve all the problems in that period of time. So the benefits that we have are, one, we generate new leaders because we're teaching them more about practice. Two, we wind up being more efficient because we can handle our resources better. Three, we mitigate our risk and